I've been having a bit of a clear out at home. And look what I found, friend of kids. It's my old school tie. That's right, we all had to wear these when I was at school. Absolutely. And it got me thinking about how I was a part of that school and all my friends and the teachers and the people I knew. And actually, looking back, it was a really happy, fun time. And that was mainly because of the people that I was with. And that was really great. Of course, I didn't get on all the time with all of the people, but it was really fun and it got me thinking about all those groups that we're a part of. I wonder what groups you're a part of at home. Maybe you're a part of the Scouts or the Cubs or a Brownie or a Rainbow. Maybe you go to a swimming group or perhaps you play football together, part of a school, part of our church and all those different communities that we make. You know, in Romans chapter 15, Paul wrote this. May God, who gives you this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other, just as it is right for followers of Christ Jesus. Paul knew that it was hard to live amongst other people, but he knew that God could give us amazing patience, that we could live peacefully and really well together in really great communities. And that's what we're going to be looking about today. We're going to spend some time praying for those communities now. So get your cape on, get your mask on. It's time for Prayer Superheroes. Prayer superheroes, are you all ready to pray? Capes on, masks on, I hope so at home. Perhaps you've got a jumper tied around your shoulders. You look great. Well, I wonder if God's people had a map to help them get back to Israel, back to Jerusalem. I reckon they might have needed one. If you've ever looked at a map before, you'll have noticed lots of little symbols, little pictures that tell you what is where. And I thought we'd use some of those today to help us pray for our different communities, those different groups of people that we're part of. So let's have a look at the first one. Oh, here's our first one. This one, it says sk, S-C-H, sk. For school, that's right. I could hear you calling it out at home. We can pray for our schools, our preschools. Let's do that now together. Father God, we thank you for the schools and the preschools, the nurseries that we're part of. We thank you for the children and for the adults that we get to spend time with. We pray that you will help us to get along really well, to have fun, to stay safe and to enjoy learning together. Amen. OK, on to the next symbol. Oh, you might recognise this one. This is a symbol for a church. And this one's a round circle with a cross on top, which I expect you'd recognise. Let's pray for our churches that we're a part of. Lord God, we thank you that in our country we're able to meet together to worship you, to learn more about you and to love you. Help us to love those people in our church. Help us to be like brothers and sisters together, loving each other and loving you. Amen. Let's see what's next. Oh, this is a flag. And on a map, this is uh, the symbol for a golf course. So I thought we could pray about all those sports groups that we might be a part of and all those groups that we're a part of to have fun, like brownies and cubs and beavers and rainbows and football clubs and swimming clubs and sports clubs and all those different clubs that we might be a part of. So, Father, we thank you that we have got a time to have fun together. We thank you that we can do all sorts of different groups and clubs to enjoy spending time together. Help us to make really good friends in those places and help us to share your love with those people we meet. Amen. Our final one then is this rather impressive looking building on this symbol. And I thought this looked a bit like maybe an office or a place where somebody might work. And I thought, do you know, around our town, there are lots of places where adults work, where they go and do all sorts of different things, maybe in offices or factories, building sites, doctors, surgeries, all sorts of different places where people might work. So, Father, we thank you for the people that go out to work to help us to have good things. We pray that you will keep them safe, help them to do their work really well, help them to make really good friends and relationships when they're at work and to show other people what it's like 
to follow you. Amen. Before we do anything else, let's sing, let's dance, let's make a joyful noise together. It's over to the band. Ready? Okay. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness too. Woohoo! Gentleness and self-control. We got spirit, how about you? We got the fruit, yeah, yeah. Fruit of the spirit. We got the fruit, yeah, yeah. This is how we live. We got the fruit, yeah, yeah. Fruit of the spirit. The gifts that only God can give. Well, it's easy to get mad. Don't go your way It's easy to get angry When you're having a bad day It's easy to be mean When people do you wrong It's easy to complain When you just can't get along There's a better way Spirit can help you when you pray with God the spirit got the fruit, yeah, yeah. This is how we live. We got the fruit, yeah, yeah. Fruit of the spirit, the gifts that only God can give. Well, it's easy to be selfish when you need to give away. It's easy to run when you know you need to stay. Yeah. It's easy to quit instead of staying to the end. It's easy to argue Instead of speaking like a friend But there's a better way Hey, hey, hey The Spirit can help you when you pray We got the fruit, yeah, yeah Fruit of the Spirit Got the fruit, yeah, yeah This is how we live We got the fruit, yeah, yeah Fruit of the Spirit The gifts that only God can give Hurry up! Ready? Okay! Love, joy, peace Kindness, goodness, faithfulness to woohoo, gentleness and self-control. We got spirit, how about you? We got the fruit, yeah, yeah. Fruit of the spirit, got the fruit, yeah, yeah. This is how we live, we got the fruit, yeah, yeah. Fruit of the spirit, the gifts that only God can give. The gifts that only God can give. The gifts that Oh, the gifts that only God can give. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! part of lots of different communities, and I'm sure that you are too. Communities are groups of people that we spend our lives with, and this week I spent some time filming all the different people that I am in a community with. Let's go! Well, I'm part of the school community, with my friends in my class, and my teachers too. Perhaps you're part of a school community. And of course, I love being part of Freedom Church with people of lots of different ages, and it's great. I love being part of my swimming club. <laughs> and I have liked being part of some Zoom communities, like this one with my friends where we get together and pray and read the Bible together. I really like being part of my football team. Hey, Burr, on the head. <laughs> well, those are just some of the communities that I'm a part of during the week. I wonder which communities you're a part of. Well, this week we're going to find out what happened when God worked through Nehemiah to rebuild the community of Jerusalem.
the people of Israel were exiles in the land of Persia. God punished them for their ongoing sin and disobedience and took away his protection from them. So the Persians came and destroyed the city of Jerusalem and took the Israelites as their slaves. One of these Israelite slaves was a man named Nehemiah. His job was to serve food to the king and to make sure it was safe to eat. Though most of the Israelites lived in Persia, there were a few that survived and were still left in the broken down Jerusalem. He missed Jerusalem and wanted to go back and help those people. Nehemiah could not stop thinking about and praying for Jerusalem. He was sad all the time. One day, while Nehemiah was before the king, the king said, Nehemiah, why are you so sad? Are you sick? Is something troubling you? Nehemiah couldn't hold it in any longer. O oh, king, live forever. My home country, my father's land, is in ruin. The king was concerned and offered to help Nehemiah. Nehemiah told the king that he wanted to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild it as well as the walls around it. So Nehemiah asked the king for building supplies. He also asked the king to write a letter that he could show to anyone on his journey back to Jerusalem. This letter bore the seal of the king and protected Nehemiah as he traveled back to Jerusalem. It was a long and dangerous journey, but Nehemiah was excited to go back. As they neared Jerusalem, they could see its ruins in the distance. The beautiful city of Jerusalem was all broken down, with no wall around it. Work began immediately. Nehemiah wasted no time and gathered all the men to help rebuild the wall. He assigned each group to their task, rebuilding sections of the walls, brick by brick. It was a big task that was going to take a long time. As Nehemiah and the men rebuilt the wall, many leaders from nearby countries tried to stop them. They threatened to kill the Israelites. Nehemiah prayed to God and did not stop working. Each day, they worked harder and harder, and the wall became stronger and stronger. After months of hard work and danger, the job was complete. There was singing, dancing, feasting, and a huge celebration. God was the one who deserved praise and glory for the finished job. The people who had stayed behind living in Jerusalem had been living in ruins for 70 years. Imagine what it might be like to live amongst broken down walls and crumbling homes. Imagine shops that are empty, houses where friends used to live with nobody home for years. It must have been terrible. We've had a tough time over the last year, and sometimes it might feel a little bit similar to those people who lived in Jerusalem. Clubs not meeting, schools not like it used to be, having to stay away from friends and families to keep them safe. But now is the time to rebuild. It's time for us to rebuild those communities that we are a part of. Nehemiah knew that he alone, or even with the help of the Israelites still living in Jerusalem, could not complete a job as big as rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem. Nehemiah drew his strength from the Lord. When leaders of the surrounding nations began to threaten Nehemiah, he didn't worry, he turned to God. He knew he was doing God's work and that God would protect him. Because he trusted in God, Nehemiah didn't have to worry about protecting himself, he could just keep working on the wall. So as we go back to being part of different communities, let's remember that God gives us strength to do it. Let's remember that we can trust God. Let's imagine just how brilliant our communities could be when we live our lives for him, showing his amazing love to those people we meet. Let's pray. Father God, you are an amazing God who made us to share our lives together. Help us to trust you as we get back to being part of communities and keep everyone safe. Give us your strength and your courage to make our communities places where your love is shown. Amen. Family Think! Which communities do you belong to? Church? School? Family?
pray for your communities. It's craft corner time, but today we're not in the corner. We're out and about where we live, and we're going to be praying today for our neighbours and lots of different people in our community. And we're going to chalk some message on the pavement for them. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our neighbours and the people that we live with. We pray that you we will bless you will bless them, and that we will tell them the good news about you. Amen. Amen. We're at our local park now and to pray we're going to use our chalks to draw some of the children that come to this park. So now we're here at our local shops and we're going to pray for all the people. You can see the park too. And we're going to pray for all the people that use these shops that they would know that they are so worth it to God. Let's pray. Lord, we pray for all those people that come in and out of these shops. We pray that as they spend their money, they would know that they are worth so much to you. Amen. Amen. Right, let's draw a message for them. So we're in our last location now and we're at the community centre and lots of things happen here at the community centre, lots of different groups. And um, Why do we come here? For Freedom Church. Yeah, for Freedom Church. So we're going to pray for these people as we draw in chalks. Well, that is it for this week and that is it for Freedom Kids Online. Thank you so much for joining us online, for watching along as we have come together to meet with God, to greet one another, to grow in faith and to go into the world. But that is not the end of Freedom Kids because we are so excited that we are going to continue meeting together. That's right. You can log on online and book your place to come and join us at Freedom Church. All through the summer, there's going to be things for kids to do as well. You would be really welcome to join us and we can't wait to see you in real life. Bye.